Good evening. My name is Charles Tulipa. I'm pastor at Race Chapel United Methodist Church. So glad to have you join us this evening, uh, this Wednesday evening of, of Holy Week, uh, to be in worship um, together. We pray that, that uh, you will draw near to God in this time of worship and that you will feel God's presence drawing near to you uh, as well. Let me just share a couple of announcements of, of things that are going on. Uh, we are having Holy Week services uh, tomorrow night as well. Uh, online for Monday, Thursday. Um, we'll be sharing in uh, Holy Communion together. We also have um, our sanctuary that is, is set up for our Stations of the Cross in person uh, so that you can schedule a time on Thursday anytime from uh, noon until 7 or on Friday anytime from noon until 7. If you would call the office at 448 1251. Um, you can uh, get a time scheduled with Connie. It takes about 20, 20 to 30 minutes, perhaps, to go through um, the Stations of the Cross. Uh, and uh, hope that you'll take advantage of that opportunity and that, that uh, spiritual experience. On Friday, we will also have an online version of Stations of the Cross um, that will be posted at noon, and you can do that anytime time um, after noon on Friday if you would uh, prefer a virtual online Stations of the Cross as well. So we hope that you'll join in that opportunity. On Sunday morning, we're excited uh, about Easter, Easter celebrations. And uh, we will be online at, uh, starting at 9.45, and you can watch any time after that our online Easter celebration. But we will be in person down at the Caroline County Fairgrounds at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning. Looking forward to a wonderful Easter celebration. Um, it would really be helpful if you would bring your own chair. We'll be outside but under a pavilion. Um, and the weather looks like it's going to be beautiful, so we're excited about that. Uh, we'll be joining and singing together for the first time in over a year uh, as, we, as we sing Christ the Lord is Risen Today uh, on an Easter celebration. Hope that you'll plan to join us for that uh, celebration. Again, thank you for joining us this evening. Let us then go to God in prayer. Oh God, you... You come to each of us and you offer your mercy and your grace. And so we say thank you. And we sing of your goodness, O oh God. We realize that so often in this life we have fallen into the trap of following our own ways rather than following your path. And so often, the path that we choose to follow leads to ways of evil and tragedy. And we end up betraying you. Then, when confronted with the ways that we have fallen short of your will, we, we then look for others to whom we can place the blame. Oh Lord, we pray this night that you would continue to have mercy upon us. That you would come quickly, O oh God, and forgive our sin. We lift up before you this evening, O oh God, many who have grown weary. There are many who are faint of heart because they've been struck down by illness of the body, illness of the mind, illness of the spirit. And we know, O oh God, that you have compassion for them. Because you too, you have endured assaults on every side. Reach out to those, O oh God, who have been broken. And grant them peace and deliverance. Bring them through their suffering to a place of wholeness once again. Oh God, deliver us all. Deliver us for the sake of Jesus, who is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Your Son, our Lord, in whose name we pray this night. Praying the prayer that he taught us to say by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Won't you join with Clay in a song of praise? passage of scripture for you this evening from Mark's gospel as we continue this journey through the gospel of Mark from the 15th chapter starting at the 33rd verse. Mark writes the events in this way. When the sixth hour had come there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour and at the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice Eli Eli lalem sabachahim which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, behold, he's calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly this man was the Son of God. There were also women, women looking on from a distance, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger of Joseph and Salome. When he was in Galilee, they followed him and ministered to him. And there were also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts truly be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I'm not certain that you, that, uh, that you would have caught it. I didn't, I didn't catch it until I was reading this um, passion story again this week, but I thought it an interesting phase, 
phrase that Mark, Matthew, and Luke all use in their account of Jesus being crucified. Mark uses the phrase in the 40th verse of this account when he writes that some women were looking on from a distance. The actual Greek word is makron, makron, which means uh, from a distance. Those, those women weren't too close, but they, they stood back a distance away from the real action. And, and I, I, truthfully, I don't know that I, that I blame them. After all, a man was being horribly tortured, murdered. Any prudent person would have stood back from the action. Besides, they were women, and, and women in that day and time, were, they were confined more to a private world, conditioned to follow the action at a distance. Luke talks about the disciple Peter, who after Jesus was arrested, follows the cross-bearing Christ from a macron, from a distance. As Jesus is, is led away into the darkness to die, Luke says that Peter, the chief of the disciples, the rock, followed at a distance. We also know that sort of distance from Jesus, don't we? Peter cowered around the fire warming himself at a distance. At least, at least Peter, he was within range, though, though at a distance, which is more than we can say for the other disciples as the going got rough. Yet Peter's distance is tragic considering all his bold boastings just a little bit earlier when he, when he was seated safe at the table with Jesus in the upper room. It, I'll follow you no matter what, Peter said. Well, Peter followed, but at a distance. Sometimes that space, that space between us and Jesus, it's Sometimes that space is predicated by fear. And we can, we can be bold with faith when we hear the stories of God who empowers people and who walks with his people. But then there is also the Jesus who told us to take up our cross and follow. Forgive me if, if I, like Peter... <laughs> do so at a distance. There are places that Jesus goes and people whom Jesus touches and things that Jesus says and expectations that Jesus has for my life and for your life that necessitate some distance between us. I remember so clearly, I, I knew the joke was inappropriate. It was not really funny. Moreover, I, I knew that the joke was wrong. It was unchristian even. But I said nothing. I let it pass. There were others who were standing there. I didn't, I didn't want them to think of me being a fanatic or, or being too pious. I follow at a, at a distance, the crown. No, no, we're not involved like, like we'd want to be, she said to me. But I'm telling you, Pastor, the work week is just so crazy. And Sunday morning, honestly, honestly, it is the only day I have to myself. And well, our son, he wanted to play soccer, and we thought that was important too. The crown. We follow at a distance. Yet there is in Scripture another use of the word macron. In other places, the use of the word macron still means distance, but it is, not, it is not the distance, not the gap between our sin and God's holiness. But in other places, macron is the distance bridged by God who is determined to have us. In Luke's gospel, there's that famous story that Jesus tells, often referred to as the story of the prodigal uh, son. It's a story that Jesus tells us to, in order to teach us about God and God's desire and God's love for us. And the stories of a young son who is bored with his life and ungrateful for all, for all that his father has done for him. And so he breaks his father's heart, this young son does, and he asks for 
his share of the inheritance even before his father has died. And, and his father gives the young son the money and the boy leaves home for a life of fun and adventure. And, and soon the, the boy has spent all of his money in reckless living. Realizing his life's mistakes, he decides to return home to his father. He, he, he's, he's determined to confess his sin and act as a servant to his father. And as Jesus tells this story, which is actually a story about God, Jesus says that the father was waiting for his son, looking for him, and he saw him, Macron, at a distance. And Jesus said the father came running out and embraced his son and welcomed him home. He, he didn't wait. That father didn't wait for a confession or contrition, but he ran out Easter-like and he bridged the gap. He shortened the distance and embraced his child. This evening and throughout this week that we call holy, we will remember how Jesus stretches out his arms on a cross, a costly embrace, but in doing so, drawing all unto himself, all people. Jesus comes to us because we would not, because we could not come to him. Jesus reaches out across that great gap the gap of our cowardice, the gap of our sin, the gap of our apathy, the gap of our fear. Name it whatever you will. Jesus reaches out to us, determined to bring us close. All of us who stand at a distance. Peace. And amen. Let us pray together. Oh Lord, we thank you that in this week called holy, we are reminded of the lengths that you will go to bring us near to you. Of the lengths that you will go, O oh God, to bring that distance down to none, that we may live in relationship with you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, I hope that you will plan to, to join us in the Stations of the Cross, uh, um, uh, either on Friday uh, in person or uh, Thursday or Friday in person or Friday online. And I sure hope that you'll plan to, to be with us in worship um, on Sunday, either whether that is online or in person uh, for our Easter celebration. With that, won't you receive this benediction this evening, that we might go forth into this world in peace and be of good courage. Hold fast to what is good and render to no person evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted and support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor every person. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the powers of the Holy Spirit. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, both now and forevermore. Amen.